is a 7 inch diagonal screen that has a resolution of 1024 by 600. Mm -hmm. um, it is innovative in, in lots of ways. The body itself is intended to be really rugged. So for example, that can happen from 70 centimeters onto concrete and you're still going to have a running device. Okay. Which, you know, for school environments, the rigors of a backpack, you want to be able to, you want to, be able to have that capability. Uh, the body is sort of a unibody, if you will. It's a single molded piece of piece of uh, plastic here. Typically, these are done in two things and fused. Instead, this is one because of an innovation that we use to mold it called gas injection. Mm -hmm. So the device itself is very rigid, which you'll see when you hold it. Uh, <clears throat> as well, the screen itself is gasketed, so there's a shock mounting value for that or a shock, shock value, uh, absorbing value for that as well. That gasket um, resists uh, water, so you can actually, it will actually resist as much as 50, centi uh, 50 cubic centimeters poured onto it. So okay. if you're using it out in the, in the rain or in a wet lab or wherever, you, you have some protection there. It's not waterproof, but it's resistant, right? Okay. Uh, as well as dust resistant, of course, because a lot of the environments that we're in are not necessarily, you know, your conventional uh, protective environment. Uh, internals, uh, you're looking at uh, standard a gig of RAM, mm -hmm. a minimum of four gigs of storage, SSD storage, uh, with the option of going to two gigs of RAM and then four, eight, 16, 32 gigs of uh, storage. Okay, so, so, you know, whatever configuration you want. It's all removable. Excuse me? It's all removable. Uh, well, it's a sealed device, so you can't open it up, and it's not it's not uh, field serviceable in that sense. Um, the uh, ports themselves are all gasketed, as you can see, right? So again, offering this measure of protection. So on this side, you have the power power uh, button to turn it on, audio. Um, Capability, so you can plug a you know headphone in, for example, or speaker. You have HDMI as an option, so you can actually video out HDMI, uh, mini SD, and uh, also a SIM card. So you have the option of 3G wireless connectivity if that's what you would want. Okay. But it comes standard with 802.11 BGN wireless capability. On this side, you have the benefit of uh, USB 2.0 as well as your AC charging port. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's a quick, you know, kind of overview of the of the. Does hardware. it charge only via the AC port or can you charge of, uh, over that's a That's a great question, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that, but let us get back to you with that. Okay. You should make a note of that one, will you? Um, but it's a really good question. Um, let's see, what else might you want to know it's about the, battery the physics? Life. Battery, battery life, good physics. question. Uh, we're looking at again. This is variable because it depends on you have something plugged into USB. You hit the you know the the wireless hard, uh, but we we spec it under what we think is a realistic classroom to be at about 5.5 hours continuously. Okay. So that's you know that's more than a classroom day. So uh, that, that's actually just doing schoolwork. Yeah, yeah, programs exactly, and exactly, like exactly. It's not you know having heavy demand off the USB port or you know it's. Regular, what you would normally use it for. What's dormant like? Dormant, uh, good question as well. I don't know what the answer to that is. Does this have a, a camera at the back side? Yes, uh, great question. Trip, so right? there are two so cameras, uh, front facing and rear facing. Okay. And uh, the front facing camera is uh, 0.3 me megapixels, the uh, rear is 1.3 optional, too. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's lots you can do with the camera, which you'll see in a moment. Um, we're very uh, we're very big on the idea of the hardware is only part of the solution. It's not the whole solution. So you know we have applications that you're probably familiar with if you know about the classmate. You know typically those have been utility applications, management applications, like classroom management and uh, um, access management, theft return, drawing, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. We're extending that. Perfect. So let me launch the No application. What you'll see what it'll do is it'll, it, it, it is actually, uh, uh, in this case, we have a couple of sample textbooks. One's focused on geology, the other on uh, organic chemistry. But of course that could be any anything at all, right? 
And what Mel is doing is they're taking the content in digital form and they're actually not just you know, putting bits on a screen or text on a screen, they're actually reaching beyond that and in, 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 including interactivity, mm -hmm. which is really the key opportunity, I think, for digital digital books or e-books, right? <clears throat> so, for example, you know, you can do the usual kinds of things. Uh, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, uh, but, you know, the usual kinds of things, you know, turn the page, that sort of thing, uh, forward and back, the, you know, reasonably good quality, I'd say actually very high quality illustrations and uh, what you'll notice is that every now and then you see a you know word that is underlined like that and yeah. basically what that's giving you is an in-context glossary okay so you get the definition or the basic text description of the concept while you're reading about it without having to oh okay I better go look that up yeah. or, right so it's all there you can also select uh, select text and do highlighting with it you can uh, navigate through the book, you know, either by dragging or by bringing up things that may be encoded either by, um, you know, the, the general uh, glossary idea or to the extent that I had them, you might actually have, um, you know, uh, bookmarks in place. Okay. So you can navigate directly to a page and you can see some of the highlighting I've done. Uh, as well, you can... Uh, you know, bring up bring up notes, and might, you might not be able to reach that from here. But generally, what it'll do is it'll let you annotate something in context, and you can once again refer back to those. And in fact, some of these links that you see may not point just to a glossary term; they may also reach out to the web and bring down a video. Okay. So, for example, if you were learning something about plate tectonics, mm -hmm. you might get a video that comes down from YouTube or wherever mm -hmm. that actually talks about that concept and animates it in real time. So you can see the the plates shifting in the way uh, that you would not be able to see in a conventional textbook. So there's lots going on in this application. It's very uh, forward-looking. Mm -hmm. um, this will be a uh, you know a standard part of our offering. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting also about NO is that a lot of our work is in countries that um, uh, want to have their their content on the device. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily. Uh, interested in having only multinational publisher textbooks they want to put their own content on it and one of the great things about no is that they can assist with that so they can take a local country's content put it in digital form and in fact add the interactive elements to it to make it you know sort of a much richer experience okay. so that's a, a quick tour of no in a geology world uh, let me back out <clears throat> and we'll look at the next level of sort of interactivity which is, uh, let me get back, back here. Where is it? You can't really see it. I'll jump out over here. I'm sort of at a bad angle here. I think the screen flipped around. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah there it is. Okay. Um, so, with this application, let me back up some pages here. Here it is. So, this is a company, and I'll back up even one more. This is a company called Adaptive Curriculum, mm -hmm. and what Adaptive Curriculum does is they have this, this notion of activity objects. So they take the standard curriculum, the content that you would want to cover as part of that standard curriculum, and they produce a set of, uh, let's say, immersive experiences, right? Vir you, you enter into, a, say, a virtual lab or in the world you're actually doing something in science and math mm -hmm. that is more authentic in the experience meaning that for example one of the things I'll show you you so this is the role you're taking on the role of the professor that's going to go out into the world and collect the rocks and then actually try and solve this problem based on the rock collection you have sitting on the table mm -hmm. okay so you simply select a rock it puts it on the on the table and you can bring over your magnifying lens and start to inspect the sample. Uh, record the notes in the notebook here, the attributes of the rock, whether it's granular or sedimentary, how coarse the grains are, and so on. You can even relate the sample to where it was collected from in the, in the environment. So once again, creating the big picture of uh, trying to solve that problem. How do you take all this evidence and assemble it to form a conclusion? Pretty high level stuff. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, it's virtual and a little um, scripted, right, which is, which is a great starting point. It gives kids 
you know, a bigger reason for thinking about why you'd go look at rocks to begin with. Yeah. Uh, but you might want to take the next step. And the next step, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at a rock. I never leave home without one, mm -hmm. right? So we have a rock that is very similar to the one we're looking at there. And I'm going to now turn this device into a lab environment. Do is I'm going to take the device, attach a lens over the camera lens, okay. and turn this into a microscope. Okay. Okay. So, just because thanks, Misha, just because we don't have a lot of light in here, I'm going to plug this little light device, light cam flashlight, if you will, into the USB port, so you can see that it's a functioning USB port that gives off power. I'm going to launch the... Okay, so we have a webcam going. Mm -hmm. We have a well-lit place, and I'll place this down over the rock, and there you can start to see the kinds of rock crystals that are showing up here. So all of a sudden, you know, you have a very inexpensive, you know, microscope value happening through software in a, a little lens that you can buy off the web for not a lot of money. Print system. Oh, I, great question. Okay. I see this is running uh, Android 2.2. Uh, yeah. you no, know, it's Android Honeycomb, right? Yeah, okay. And uh, it also supports Windows 7. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and you can imagine, you know, we're, we're going to support... Uh, operating systems as they evolve, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, for this uh, right now, you can run, take your pick. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is Windows 7 is in a, in a lot of the places where classmates are, mm -hmm. and the, you know, those um, folks may want to have a unified kind of interaction experience. Yeah. But we also want to, you know, support a, an OS that it, that was conceived of from the beginning to be touch and gesture based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we offer both. Um, any future support for Windows 8? Uh, good, good question. We're, we're familiar, of course, with what's going on with Windows 8. And we, uh, as I said, we, we constantly evolve our program to recognize where the OSs are going. Uh, you know, that, that, that can be the substance of our next visit with you. Okay. And um, just launch period for... Great the question. Device. So um, Android will be in the hands of students by mid-year. Mid-year, okay. We're talking early summer. Windows 7 will be a little bit, bit earlier. And in terms of uh, the reference design going out, that's the 10th. Okay. So you know, there, there are a couple key milestones. Key milestones, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you.